Now why the heck am I leaving this circuit board sitting out here? Well, because it has to cool off. Let's take it inside before, you know, it gets too frozen. This here is the circuit board out of a 20 megabyte microscience hard drive. Uh, I paid five or ten dollars for this at VCF Midwest. Unfortunately, it has a problem. If you plug it into a power supply, the power supply shuts down. And on evaluation, what I discovered is that one, uh, one voltage rail on this here is about 76 ohms, which is fine, whatever. The other side is 17 ohms. That's a little bit more concerning, and I'm assuming it's actually a dead short. So, obviously, our problem here is that we have a short of tantalum most likely hiding somewhere on here. Now, I can go over this whole board, and I can replace all the tantalums, and it might work. The reality is, this was sold as is. This could still very well be a dead drive. I'm not going to open it either. So I want to do the absolute minimum to get the drive to spin up so I can at least test it then. So I need to find the one failed tantalum, which isn't great because they are all installed in parallel on the voltage rails. So how do I find it? Well, thermally. That's why we had it outside. So as many of us know, tantalum has a very nasty reputation where I mean, it is great as a replacement for electrolytic capacitors under certain conditions, but as they age, the tantalums like to become unstable. Storage conditions may affect this. There's still a lot of mysteries associated to that, and I'm sure there's so many people who now have their minds set on how tantalums fail. Well, we ultimately know that as tantalums fail, they go short. Normally, a power supply, when it detects the abnormal heavy load of a short, will just shut itself down. Almost all modern PC power supplies will do that. Older electronics and older PC power supplies are not as forgiving. They're a little bit more rigorous when they detect a short, and they'll usually drive... Well, they'll drive the power supply for a little bit longer. But a dead short in one of these means that they typically either burst into flames, or they go off with a serious bang. Now, I'm a terrible individual, and I do keep around some of these little boxes of bang snaps. When you're working with old computers, and you're doing that first, like, f uh, switch flip of faith, like, these are fun to have, like, one in your hand. So you just kind of, like, aim it perfectly. They flip the switch, and... And they don't know what the heck that was, but you sure do. Just don't laugh too hard. Anyways, one thing we know about shorts is that, well, as the cause of the effect is the explosion, uh, they will generate heat quite rapidly. Now, if you could control exactly how much heat was being generated, you can actually use that to your advantage. And in this case here, we can figure out which tantalum has shorted, or maybe if there's a bad IC, by supplying it with a current limited voltage. That way the short will be there, and it will run that dead short like a heating element, and it'll show up on a thermal imaging camera. So, let's plug that in. Okay, so I have my alligator clip leads here, plugged into one side of the board, and the other side plugged into my variable bench supply. Remember, I have current control. I have it set at about half right now, but I'm just going to apply 5 volts, and uh, we'll see what it does. Well, that's actually a good sign. So I heard a relay click there, and at 5 volts it actually seemed to be quite well behaved. So we can assume that rail is fine. So let me just switch the other side over here. There, we got our leads flipped around. So let's go back over to our power supply here, and let's bring the voltage back up to 5 volts. Oh! You saw that, right? So the red there indicates current control, so it's currently reducing the voltage to whatever our amperage is right now, which is... Huh, okay, about a little over 600 milliamps. So we have our problem on this rail. So what I'm going to try and do here is let's ramp up the current because again, we can't, we can't get the voltage to go too high here because the current limiting is going to prevent that. But it's still going to allow a voltage. Sure, like we can we can start talking about how voltages and amperages affect things, but the reality is if you have enough amps going through anything that's a short, it's going to become a heating element. So let's bring it up to one. Let's bring it up to about one and a half amps there at what is that two volts? So that should be plenty. So 
I will now grab our thermal imaging camera. So here's our board. Um, this not really cheap, but lower end thermal imaging camera, which is probably just a nice repackaged AliExpress special, um, is just the thermal pilot. It doesn't actually have a camera on it. So here's what the board looks like. This thing has a resolution of 32 by 32 pixels. And now we'll just give this a little pass over. Immediately I don't see anything. Oh, what's this? I think those might be our... Well, that's reflection off of the contacts. All right, I'm going to give this a couple minutes here and then we're going to come back. Actually, I don't even have to do that just as I was cutting away there. Do you see that? We have a hot spot. What is hiding right there? That tantalum. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll give it a couple more minutes here this time, but I'm pretty sure we found our fault. Okay, it's been a couple minutes as it baked here, and there is absolutely nothing else on this board that's giving off a heat signature, except for that one tantalum, which is funny. All of these ones are cool still, and this one feels no different. And yet, something's wrong with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip that out and we're going to load check it again. Okay, I actually just pried on it and just popped it off. Anyways, it's still there. It's just isolated from the other side of the circuit. So, now, again, everything's connected exactly as it was. All I did was turn the voltage off before I popped off that cap. Bring it back up to 5 volts. That's more like it. So there we are, 5 volts, and it's drawing basically nothing for current now, so I think it's safe to put this back onto the drive and plug it back into a power supply. I am going to be very aggressive about this. I've just taken the drive, put the board back on, and I've put it into an empty 5150 carcass. Hell, the power supply doesn't even have a fan. But uh, if anything explodes, it's going to be this here, I hope, and not tantalums on that. All right, ready? Three, two, one. That's a start. And I have a flashing light. You may not see it flashing on your screen. Oh, and it just went solid. You know what? I think the drive just went ready. All right, so I can continue on with further testing from this point, but this is how I can very quickly troubleshoot and locate a shorted tantalum. Does it mean the product's still good? No, but I've dealt with the short quickly and easily. I hope this is useful for you if you by chance have a thermal imaging camera. And seriously, even these stupid low resolution 32 by like 32 pixel um, thermal imaging cameras, that's what we used in this video here. It was still very useful for locating that one weird thermal anomaly. So if you can find one of those, get your hands on one of those as well for troubleshooting. They're really handy. And until next time, have a good one.